Hi everyone, it's Lisa from I Dream in Soap. Welcome to my channel and thanks for dropping by. This soap is a rather spontaneous soap collaboration that we've called Isolation Inspiration. Now the idea behind this collaboration is that we were to go and rummage through our cupboards and find an article of clothing or maybe even a piece of fabric that gave us some sort of inspiration. And then, using supplies that we already had at home, we were to make some sort of bath and body product. Now for me, this summer dress was my inspiration. And I just love the way that the design is created by using just two slightly different colours of cream. And what it made me think of was trying out the ghost swirl technique. Now, the ghost swirl was actually created by Auntie Clara. And I'm going to leave a link to her website in the description below. And it is really worth you paying a visit to her site and just reading some of the fascinating articles and blog posts that she's written. So, that's me all inspired. Come on, let's go make some soap. If you've seen some of my videos before, you'll know at this point, typically I'll have some little pots and colour swatches and I'll explain where I actually get my colourants from. However, this technique relies on us using no colourants at all, but we still want to make a design in our soap. Now we're going to do this by manipulating the amount of water that we're going to put into our soap. So we'll work out the quantity of oils we need for each portion of our soap. Now we're not going to muck around with the lye. The lye is literally going to be the normal amount of lye that you would calculate through your lye calculator. So therefore if you had even portions of soap, you would have exactly the same amount of lye in each pot. But then we're going to add quite a lot of water to one portion and a much smaller amount of water to the other. Now, when you have a soap with less water, it will actually saponify quicker and it will go through gel phase at a higher temperature. If you have more water, it will go through gel phase at a lower temperature and that gel phase will actually last longer. So because I've now controlled the water and I'm also going to control the temperature, my low water soap will not gel, we hope but my high water soap should go through gel. So I've made up my lye solution. So obviously I've calculated the normal amount of lye that I need. Then I've made one solution up quite strong. That's my 45% jug that I've got there. So with that, that literally means that of that, 45% of it is lye and 55% of it is water. And then I've made a weaker solution as well, so therefore I've added enough water to make that 30% lye and 70% water. Now to have the best effect, you want as much difference as you possibly can with these solutions, but do be careful, you should never take your lye solution over 50% or a 1 to 1 ratio, because the lye will not dissolve if it doesn't have at least the same amount of water with it. And then I've also got this small pot of lye at the bottom made up at that 30% rate as well because that's another bit of batter that I do want to gel. So I'm going to start off with that small portion of lye and obviously some oils as well. And what I'm intending to do, and I'm sure you've seen this in some other videos that I've done, is I want to pipe a sort of flowery lacy pattern down the side of my mould. And the way that I've planned my design is that the outside of my loaf is going to be non-gelling soap. So therefore, for this pattern to show up, I need the piping to actually gel. And that's why I've made it with that weaker solution. So I'm just going to blend it all together and bring it up to probably a medium sort of trace. And then I'm just going to let it sit. Now, I'm really conscious that I want this to actually gel. So I'm going to try and keep it nice and warm. I'm going to wrap it up whilst it gets a little bit thicker. Now, 
Now, I must admit, as I was doing this, I had no idea whether it was going to work or not. Um, and the reason for that is because the outside of the soap was going to be the coolest part of the soap. And I wanted the very outside of my soap, this pattern, to actually gel. So I was kind of expecting when my soap came out of the mould, it just to be a single solid colour all the way down the side. So my plan to try as hard as possible to get gel in this bit of piping was firstly keep the batter nice and warm but I also put the sides of my mould into the oven at 60 degrees to preheat them and then all throughout the piping I kept them on the warmed baking tray so I've got a stainless steel baking tray underneath this cloth with my moulds on top and I've piped while everything was still nice and warm and then when I finished, I popped everything back in the oven at 60 degrees to try and keep that temperature up. Now the rest of this soap is going to be fairly quick and reasonably straightforward because I'm not mixing up any colours or anything. You could add a fragrance or essential oil if you wanted to. I just have chosen not to in mine. I'm just going to keep it all completely plain. Now for the design I'm doing, I want my batter to remain nice and fluid, so I'm going to mix up my weaker lye solution first. The logic of that is that that one should actually be slower to trace and to thicken, so if I do that one first, that can sit quite safely while I mix up the heavier solution. Now once I've got both of my portions mixed up, I'm just going to do a final check to make sure that I have got them fully emulsified. Now if you struggle to see emulsion on the base of your stick blender, use something like a big stainless steel spoon like I'm doing here, because you get a nice coverage and you can just hold it out up to about a minute to see if that emulsion will break, and it's just a nice straightforward way of testing. And then I've got my mould out of the oven and reassembled it. I've actually put in some dividers as well, so I'm going to sort of start this off a bit like a Taiwan swirl, but I am actually going to swirl it in a different way. So make sure as you're pouring you're knowing which batter is going to go where. And it can be quite tricky to tell because obviously they look really similar, so that's why it's a good idea to have either the percentages written on the jug or gel, no gel, just something just to make sure you don't get them mixed up. Now for my design, I deliberately chose to put the batter that I want to gel in the centre section and the batter that I didn't want to gel in the outside sections. There's no point trying to fight with what will actually happen with a soap. And I'm sure you know from things like partial gel and that, a soap gets hotter in the middle and is more likely to gel in the middle. So therefore, put the bit you want gelled in the middle, the bit you don't want gelled on the outside. And then once you're poured, you can remove those dividers And can you see the difference in the colours of the batter already just because of the difference of that water amount? Now I don't want anything as formal as a Taiwan swirl because I'm trying to get a more sort of a leafy, flowery type, feathery sort of look going through my soap. So therefore I'm just going to wiggle up and down with my little stick that I've got here and then just go back and do some little loops as well to get the pattern that I want.
Now my battery is still really, really fluid at the moment, so I'm just going to leave here just to sit a little while, not for very long, and make sure it just sets up a fraction so that I can move it into the oven. Now the oven temperature is really important because remember we don't want the entire soap to gel. So normally if I'm going to see pop my soap, I put it in the oven at 75 degrees C, but I'm going to put it in at 60 degrees C here just to make sure only the centre gels but the outside doesn't. So I unmoulded the soap the next day and look those flowery blobby things on the side did actually work. So all of that heating and keeping the mould warm did seem to make those little bits of soap actually go through gel. And then as we flip it over and have a look at the top you can see the swirl pattern, the sort of leafy design that I did going through. Now the cut. I'm sure I pressed record. I think I might have actually pressed it twice. That's why I've missed the start of the cut. And it was only when I looked up and saw the screen was black that I noticed I'd missed some of it. So therefore I'm just sort of showing you the cut bars as they would have been cut. And then I'll actually cut the little bits that I did have left over. I really love this technique. I found it absolutely fascinating the way that you could just play around with different amounts of water and using the temperature to manipulate the soap to either get gelled or ungelled part of the soap. I also think it really helps you to understand the way soap works a lot better. And it certainly puts an elegant spin on a plain bar of soap. So thanks very much to Auntie Clara. And if you're going to have a go at this technique yourself, don't forget to check out her blog post that I'll link in the description below. So I'll just leave you with some pictures of the final soap. If you've enjoyed this video and like the soap, why not leave me a thumbs up? If you'd like to see what I'm making in the future, why not subscribe to my channel and maybe even hit that notification bell. And if you've got any questions or comments, then just leave them in the comments box below. I'm really good at getting back to people, so I will reply to your comment. Thanks for watching everyone. Happy soaping!